This is Nick with logosbynick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create a geometric photo collage using both Inkscape and GIMP. And this is going to be the first time I've ever done a tutorial where I use both Inkscape and GIMP in the same video. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. First, we're going to use Inkscape to create the geometric shape. And by the way, if you'd like to know how you can update Inkscape with this dark theme and these new icons, I'll have a link to that information in the description of the video. So to get us started, the first thing we want to do is set up our document. So I'm going to come over to File and Document Properties. Let me try that again. File, Document Properties. And I want to set the display units to pixels. And I want to change uh, where it says uh, Show Page Border. We want to turn that off and we can close out of this. And up here where it says snap, enable snapping, we want to make sure we have that selected and we want this selected as well. This icon right here that says snap cusp nodes including rectangle corners. We're going to need that turned on for this video. And then I want to open up the align and distribute menu. We're going to want last selected shows within that drop down. And then we'll open up the edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke menu as well. So uh, to get our shape started, I'm going to use the stars and polygons tool, which is over here. And from this toolbar up here, we, up here, we want to select polygons as opposed to stars. We want six corners, rounded and randomized, both set to zero. And then I'm going to hold Control and Shift on the keyboard and click and drag to create a polygon like that. And the way I'm creating it, I want to make sure that the corners are going vertically up and down like that. We don't want it like this where like the sides are going or, or are sitting vertically like that. We want this shape just like that. And once we've done that, uh, we can let go of everything. I'm going to grab the select tool and bring the opacity of this down a little bit. I'm going to right click on this shape and go to duplicate. And I'm going to make that red. And I'm going to move this over. I'm going to take this bottom left corner right here and snap it onto the top left corner of the black polygon just like that. And if you want to move your page around, you can just press down the mouse wheel and move the mouse. And I want to duplicate this again. I'm going to right click this and go to duplicate this red shape. And I'll make this one green. And I'll take this top right corner and snap it onto the bottom corner of the red polygon, just like that. And then finally, I want to take this black original polygon and just snap this into the corner right here. And I want to make this one blue. And what I'll do is I'll duplicate this one more time. I'll right click that and go to duplicate and I'll make this one black. And then I'll take this one and just snap it right into this corner right there so it sits right in the middle. And with this black polygon selected, I want to duplicate that Again, instead of right-clicking it and going to duplicate, you would just hit Control D on the keyboard. And with that selected, I'm going to hold Shift and click on the red polygon and go to Path Intersection. Then I'll take this black polygon. Again, I'll hit Control D to duplicate it. Hold Shift, click on the green polygon and go to Path Intersection. And then finally, we don't have to duplicate this last one, this last black polygon right here. We can just click that, hold Shift, click on the blue one and go to Path um, intersection. And we now have a little, uh, I guess you can call this kind of like a cube made of three different pieces. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag over all three of these objects and I'm going to group them together with this button up here. Or you can just press Control G to group them together. And up here where it says width and height, I want to turn on this lock icon to lock the proportions. I, I want to change the width of this to, uh, I'll say, 600 and hit enter. And what I'll do now is, let me zoom in. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to right click on this and go to duplicate and then I want to flip this vertically and I want to change the width of this to 300 which is half of the height which is half of the width of the previous one just like that and let me zoom out a little bit I'm going to hold control and roll down the mouse wheel to zoom out I'm going to click and drag over both of these objects and make sure they're centered on the vertical and horizontal axis just like that and what I'll do now is I'll ungroup them with this button right here. Just click that a couple of times to ungroup it. And I want to right click this and go to duplicate and take this duplicated copy and move it off to the side here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this top left corner right here and snap it onto this top middle corner of the smaller polygon right there. So I'm going to take this and just bring it over there and snap it on there just like that. And I want to click and drag over everything here. And I just want to turn this all black like that. So what we have now is we pretty much have a grid that we can use to draw our geometric shape. This is not going to be the actual shape we use. This is just a reference point. So let me click off of that to deselect everything. I'm going to grab the Bezier pen, which is over here, or you can just press B on the keyboard to grab that. 
And I want to snap to this top left corner over here and snap to this corner going straight across and bring this one down to this corner. Bring this one over here and then back to the starting point. And I want to make that one red. And I want to get rid of that black outline by holding shift and clicking on this X down here. And then I can just take the opacity and just bring that down about in half. And I'm going to create another shape down here. Uh, I'm going to snap to this corner, the same corner we originally started with, but I'm going to bring this one down here to this corner. And then I'll bring this one down here to the very far bottom left of the smaller polygon on the left hand side. Bring this up to this corner and then back to the starting point. And I'll make that one green and again just hold shift and click the X to get rid of the, the, uh, the black outline. I'll bring the opacity down and I want to create another shape right here starting at this corner. Come down here then over here and up here back to the starting point. And I'm going to make this one red as well. I'll, take, I'll make that red, get rid of the outline, hold shift, click the X, bring the opacity down. And then finally I'm going to create one more L shape right here. So I'm going to start at this corner, come over here, and then around the outside edges to this corner, the inside corner, and then back to the starting point. And this one I will make blue. And again, get rid of the outline and bring the opacity down in half. And what we could do now is go back to the select tool and hold shift and click on the other colored shapes that we just created and just move them out of the way right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click and drag over all of this and just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that because we don't really need that anymore. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these shapes right here. I'll right click them and go to duplicate, bring them off to the side, and I'm going to flip it vertically and then horizontally and then just snap it, snap them, snap the two of them together like this. So it creates like this geographic sort of knot. Um, and what I'll do now is I'm going to click and drag over everything. And I'm going to bring the opacity all the way up. And I want to make this a little bit bigger because we're going to be using this for some pretty large high resolution photos for our collage once we open up GIMP. So I'm going to change the width of this to at least 1200. That's pretty good. And what I want to do is I want to get rid of the fill color of all these objects and put an outline around them instead. So uh, to get rid of the fill, I'm going to click the X right here. That's going to get rid of the fill color. And then I'm going to hold shift and click on the color black. And that's going to put an outline around it. And what you want to do is to, to, to make sure that the outline is consistent all the way around and to change the thickness. We can come over to here to the, uh, the stroke style tab. And where it says width units of measurement over here, like these little... Uh, where it says, I think it's millimeters by default. For you, it might be percentages. Sometimes I get percentage. We want to change this to pixels. And I'm going to change the width of this to something like five. See how that looks. Maybe a little, maybe I'll go with eight, something like that. I think that looks pretty good. And then finally, where it says join, we want to make it a rounded join and we want to make it a rounded cap as well. And once we've done that, we can, we're finished with this shape. We can go ahead and export this to use with GIMP. So to export this, I'm going to leave everything selected as you see it. I'm going to go to File, Export PNG Image, and it's going to open up this export menu over here. And from the export area, you want selection. You want to make sure you have the selection tab highlighted. I'm going to click Export As, and I'm just going to export it to my desktop for now. I'm going to name this Geographic Shape. Go ahead and click Save, and then go ahead and click Export, and then you should have that sitting there on your desktop. And so that, that concludes the Inkscape portion of the tutorial. So I'm going to close out of this, and I'm going to get GIMP opened up, and then we'll continue on from there. Okay, so now we're ready to get started with the GIMP side of the tutorial. So in the description of the video, I will have three different images linked up. Go ahead and download those images and open up this one here, this pine forest uh, image with GIMP. As you can see, I have it opened here with GIMP. And there's going to be two other images as well that we're going to be using for our collage. And I'm going to, I'm going to uh, bring them, import them into GIMP as well. So here's the other one over here with this couple sitting in a, it looks like a winter cabin. I'm just going to click and drag that into um, GIMP. And I'm just going to take this layer and bring it beneath the forest image so it's hidden behind there. And then finally, there's one more image, these uh, snowy mountains. I'm going to click and drag that into um, GIMP as well. And if you bring it to the top, you'll see that's the image. And I'm just going to take that and bring that to the bottom as well. And then finally, I'm going to click on this top layer right here. We want to bring in our image 
that we created with Inkscape. So let me go over to the desktop, and here it is right here, geographicshape.png. I'm going to click and drag that into GIMP like that. And there it is. And once we have that imported, I want to change this to white. So I'll go to Colors, and I'll choose, um, where is it, Invert. And I want to shrink this down a little bit because I don't want this to be the entire size of the page. So I'm going to grab the Scaling tool, and I'm going to click on that shape. And I'm just going to click and drag on one of these corners and hold Control to lock the proportions like that. And then go ahead and click Scale to finalize that. And then I want to take the Alignment tool and click on that object and make sure we have the relative to set to image. And I'm just going to center it up on the page both horizontally and vertically. And that's pretty much it. So I have the thumbnail opened up in this other tab over here so I can demonstrate what we're going to do next. I'm going to take segments of each image and place it into these areas of the uh, geographic uh, geometric shape. So I'm going to use this first image over here. I'm going to take this image of like the, uh, like the log cabin and I'm going to duplicate that by clicking the button that says create a duplicate of the layer and add it to the image. And I'm just going to click and drag that layer so it goes up beneath the geographic shape or the geometric shape. Uh, and I'm going to place this in here. I'm going to choose Flip Tool. And I want to choose Horizontal. Click on that to flip it around. And then we'll go back to the Move Tool. And I'll just put this in here because, as you can see, it just, it just fits better. It's going to work better to have him facing this way and her facing the other way. And everything else will work out that way as well. Now, in order to cut out all of the area outside of this little L shape right here, I'm going to grab the Paths Tool. And I'm going to zoom in on this by holding control and rolling up the mouse wheel. And I'm going to click to create a point right here. And I'm going to create another point down here. And we want to make sure we're staying within these white boundaries here. I'm going to put another point up here and another one up here. And again, just like in Inkscape, to move the page around, I'm just pressing down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse. And now we're, we're, we're going to close the path. In order to close the path, we can't just click on it. We have to hold control and click on it and then create a selection from this path. So I'm going to press Enter on the keyboard to create a selection. And let me press 1 to zoom back out. And now we'll go to Select, Invert, and then Edit, Clear. Or you know what? Let me undo that. Edit, Undo, Undo, Clear. We first have to right-click this layer and go to Add Alpha Channel. And now we can go to Edit, Clear. My mistake. Okay. And you know what? While we're at it, let's go to these other layers and do that as well. Let's right-click on that and go to Add Alpha Channel. Go to this one, Add Alpha Channel. Go to this one, Add Alpha Channel. There we go. Now we can go back up to this second layer up here. We can grab the Move tool to get rid of the, uh, um, the, uh, the paths. And then we can go to Select None. And there we have that image inside of there. So I'm going to go around and do this for the rest of this image. I'm going to use this log cabin image for the outlying shape. So I'm going to put her face in the, in the bottom right. I'm going to put the dog's face up here. And then I'll use like the coffee mug over here. So uh, we're pretty much just going to repeat these steps. I'll do it. I'll go through these, this process one more time for you just to help you uh, better understand it. Duplicate that layer. Bring it back up beneath the other layers. Grab the move tool. And I'm going to put her down here like that. And again, we're going to grab the Paths tool, zoom in by holding Control and rolling up the mouse wheel. And we're just going to create a path going around this shape. Then we'll go to Select, Invert, and then press Delete on the keyboard. And then go to Select, None. Or if you're using a Mac, you don't press Delete. You just go to Edit Clear like I originally did. Now we go back to the Move tool. Let me press 1 on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. And you should pretty much get the idea. I'll go through and, and do these two shapes right here, then I'll move on to the next image. Okay, so as you can see, I went through and added those images, parts of those images to the outline shapes around the edges here. So for these center shapes right here, I'm going to use the mountain image, as you can see here in the thumbnail. So I'm going to take the mountain image, and I'm going to duplicate that and bring that up right beneath these other layers I was working with. And I'm going to grab the Move tool, and I'm going to position this mountain image about where I'd like it to be, because uh, this image is going to go through this shape right here, and it's going to go through this shape down here, and it's also going to go through this middle shape over here. So uh, once I have a position to where I like it, I'll grab the Paths tool, and I'm just going to repeat this process again. Click to create a point up here, 
then up here, over here, then over here. And I'm just going to do this all in one shot because these three shapes will all be encompassing the same image. Bring this over here and like that. And then again, to close the path, we're holding control, clicking on the original point, and then press enter on the keyboard, select uh, invert, select, uh, no, edit, clear, and go to select none. And you can press one to zoom back out. And there you can see I have the mountain image going through that. I guess you can call that a letter H sort of through the H shape of this geometric shape here. Let me grab the move tool. Finally, we're just going to use the original forest image for these other two pieces right here. If you notice to switch things up a bit, I grabbed the section of the, of the image where the sky was and I put it down here. And then I grabbed the section of where the forest is and I put it right here. So let me go do that real quick and uh, I'll catch up with you when I'm done. Okay, so as you can see, I've finished up filling in everything of our geometric shape. So that should pretty much do it for the tutorial, except for one last final step. And this is, this is really optional. You don't have to do this. I did this because I thought it was a nice touch. If you notice here, the colors and the, uh, uh, the, uh, the depth of the shadows, they look a little bit different than what I've done here. Uh, so in order to, to, to give this like this, uh, the, I guess you can call this like a flat sort of faded Instagram filter sort of effect, and where, you know, all the images kind of look like they belong together, where it all looks uniform. To do all that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this very top layer up here and click on that. And then I'll right click it and go to New from Visible. And what that's going to do is that's going to create an entirely new layer of everything we've created that's visible that we can edit. And I, I prefer doing it this way because... If you end up not liking what you did, you could always just turn off the visibility and go back and edit all of these individual elements here. So let me go back up to this top layer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Colors, Curves, and I'm going to take this bottom left node and I'm just going to bring that up a little bit. Let me move this over so you can see what's happening to the image as I do this. I'm going to move this up a little bit. Notice how the colors on the, uh, on the image change. And once I do that, maybe not that much, maybe like there. I'm going to take the line right about here. I'm just going to click and drag that. I'm going to dip that down a little bit. Maybe do something like this right here. And if you toggle the preview on and off, you can notice how it changes. And that right there looks pretty good. One more step I want to do is maybe I'll actually, you know what, maybe I'll bring this in a little more. Okay, that looks pretty good. One last final little step here. I'm going to go up here to where it says channel and I'm going to grab the, uh, the blue channel. And I'm going to take this node and bring that up as well to add some blue to the image. And then I'll take this node up here at the very top right and bring that down to wash some of it out. So we get kind of like this faded bluish, yellowish, cream color sort of uh, effect. And if you toggle the preview off and on, you could see there's clearly a difference in the composition between the two different images. And I personally like how this looks. I think it looks pretty cool with that, uh, that Instagram filter sort of look. So I'll go ahead and click OK. And if you don't like how it looks, you could just toggle off the visibility of that layer and it goes back to how it previously was. Or you could just turn it on if you'd like it. And you could just export it however you'd like. So that pretty much does it for this tutorial. That's how you can go about creating this geometric uh, photo collage using both Inkscape and GIMP. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.